A boy was walking his bumblebee tied it to a string. The sky was lit up with violet light. A bird began to sing a song of sixpence. That is a great one of both of us. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. We're recording. Hi. I did not know that. <laughs> I, I can edit out the first bit. That's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Welcome to Pages Podcast. Hi. We're a podcast about books. Um, this is episode nine. Um. And I haven't actually put up episode eight yet. <laughs> <laughs> She's been very, very busy. I have been very, very busy. Uh, and I don't know the technical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been attempting to, to get into grad school. So I've been really busy. Uh, but I'm less busy now, so I'll get all the episodes up. Um, Absolutely sometime the, within the next month. For the couple of people who actually listen to this. So. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, um, I, since I didn't get the previous one up, I, we I never actually announced this, um, but at the end of the last one, <laughs> which <laughs> nobody's seen yet, uh, we Kate picked red shirts. <laughs> it's like we're going through time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm sad that I didn't post it because it was fun. I liked it. I'm not, I'm not actually sure. It was Kate's pick, but I'm not actually sure she liked it. <laughs> I did like it. I did like it. It wasn't what I was anticipating. Yeah. I, I went in with no expectations. Yeah. I think I, I went in with too many. Yeah. Um, I, I had heard it was good, but I really didn't know what it was about. Um, I knew it had won a couple awards. Um, I, I, I listened to the audiobook, which we both listened to the audiobook version, right? Yeah. Um, this was a good one for audiobook. There's not too much to follow. You can pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it is a very easy listen um, or a very fun read. Um, I, I read uh, a review about it that sort of described it as a beach read, like even though it's, it's won um, the Hugo Award and uh what was the other word hugo award and the locust award so hugo world best novel in 2013 locust world award for best sci-fi novel so to me that would say it's like serious but it's it's fun I, it's um it's parody i would kind of describe it as the Cabin in the Woods of Sci-Fi. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. So um, for instance, Cabin in the Woods, Cabin in the Woods of Sci-Fi, wouldn't this be the Cabin in the Woods of Literature? No, because it's not, it's not, I mean, there is, this is, um, and, and I got this from a review because I'm, I'm actually, unfortunately, not so great at the Shakespeare, but, um, there's a lot of uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead in here, um, but mostly it's Star Trek. Yeah. So it's it's not a parody of literature. It's a parody of television. <laughs> So I, th I think it's a parody of the sci-fi genre and sci-fi TV, not really sci-fi novels, because a lot of the, the tropes and things that it was making fun of were from the Star Trek series. And even though there's probably a lot of this stuff in here that I missed because I watched Star Trek, but not, um, not in any sort of serious linear way it would just be you know an episode here and there whereas um, to i watched all of them in sequence about right. nine times already yeah and growing <laughs> up i i just didn't do that like it was I, my bonding experience with my dad right you know and and mine was actually um in you, you know my dad was was very tv centric and so i think i wasn't um, because I have kind of a weird thing about, um, until there was DVR, I would not 
like I would watch something if I was around to watch it, or I would do a lot of channel surfing and I would keep the television on for noise, but like I wouldn't make an effort to sit down and watch things at the same time every week, kind of. Like I, had, I, I can't really help that. But that, like I, I'm the exact opposite where most people are. I mean, if the TV is on, I am focused. Uh, moving things just fascinate me. I'm the sort of person that grocery store, I've got to loop my finger on somebody else's belt loop because I'm like, woo, shiny. And I, I can't. So TVs are like sinkholes for me. Yeah. Well, they, they are a little bit for me. Like I made a rule a while back because I would, I did have the, the, the habit of having it on for noise. And, um, I think some people could do that, but for me, it would catch my attention and I would just end up watching, you know, stuff that I really do. I really didn't need to watch. I mean, I, I like bad television and I'm fine with liking bad television. Vampire Diaries. Um, <laughs> God. but <laughs> I kind of made the rule that if I was going to watch something, I was going to watch it deliberately. So... I DVR things and I will watch them and I can do other things while I'm watching them. Like I draw a lot while I'm, I have the TV on. And so I will sort of, I, I will miss stuff, but um, it's bad television. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's bad television, I am there right there. I actually, I don't watch series because I have to wait until they're <laughs> series. <laughs> finished at the very very end I'm like okay they are going to finish this because I was burned one time one time the Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles yeah I I, I um it's not happy I would have watched that but I, it happened before I started watching I was watching so it, upset so with I'm that gonna... because I, I don't spend my time on TV at all ever right like it, it's just I have to make special time for it I don't even own a TV right now which you know sounds like a really pretentious thing to say. No, just... if I were, if I were if I were single, I would not own a TV. I mean, I would watch things online probably. But meanwhile, she's got a TV that's like bigger than my. That's for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really good bit. I appreciate it, but I am the kind of person that um, will watch. You know, you remember the classic iPod with the screen like this big? I would watch things on that. Like, I, I would be out at my mom's because it was when Veronica Mars, I was watching Veronica Mars, and um, there was an episode, just a few episodes I hadn't watched yet, and I was, like, sitting there with my little tiny iPod, like, watching them <laughs> on the iPod, and I was, I'm fine with that. I thought it was so, actually going to get fancy the other day. Like, a couple of days ago, I found myself um, with maybe an hour spare time. Okay, it wasn't spare time, but it was, like... A time, a, an hour that I felt like I could eat into my sleep time so that I could have free time that day. And so, like, 11.30 at night, I'm like, I can watch TV. And I get really excited, and I pulled out my iPad, which was Blue's iPad at one point, and I go to turn it on, and I'm all excited. I'm like, oh, the cat, I've got my tea, and the cat's in, th in bed with me, and I'm like, I'm going to, there is no charge on this. Never mind, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Yeah, you can plug it in. Yeah, I did plug it in, and it's ready for... You can just watch. I, I was in bed, and, and the cord was over oh, there. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't going to watch it out of bed. <laughs> yes, yes, I get that. I get that. That's horrifying. Yeah. Why would I want to do that? Yeah, so we do have a very large television. It is for my husband. If I were single, I would... And for watching TV. Aristocats when the girls decide to get together. Yes. Yes. It is handy. I do appreciate the, the big television. I just wouldn't. It's not something I would have on my own. Yeah. Understandable. And, unless it was my computer monitor. <laughs> that would be okay. <laughs> this thing is huge. And there are two of them. Like, could you say, like, if that were, like, hanging on the wall, and that, were, that would be amazing. I want a wall screen. That. I do. And I'll sit right on top of it, too. And, like, my palettes are over here. Yeah. Ever, ever since I saw that picture with the Al Gore set up with, like, the three huge monitors, that's what I want. I, I want to feel like I'm at a control center. I've actually had <laughs> three monitors. The, uh, well, it was worse than that. It was three monitors and an iPad. <laughs> the iPad was specifically for music because I didn't want it to slow everything else down. Yeah. That's what I have. I have another little iMac over here. Um, sorry for non-video. Um, I'm pointing. Um, yeah, and that's exactly what it's for. That whole huge thing is just for... Well, it's the old iMac. I just haven't gotten rid of it. 
So it's I went. Huge, to, I went. It's uh, huge. I it's went, not the size of an iPad. No, but uh, but oh. but it was my old computer, and when we got the new one, I was like, oh, I'll just set this one over to the side, and that's what I watch Buffy on. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do have two screens and my MacBook, but for a while I had three screens and my MacBook, and I didn't have anywhere to put my files where I could reach my timesheets or easily enough, and. It got, became really obnoxious. Like, my files being at arm's length was actually more handy than the third monitor. Yeah. So it had to go. Yeah. Yeah, I would have that problem, but I, I might deal with it. Because the the problem with having the se separate computer for the stuff is that um, I have a double monitor system at work, so I'm constantly getting confused is why. <laughs> like, I can't put stuff over on the other iPad. Like, wait, oh, yeah, I'm not at work. <laughs> I don't have two screens. I have two computers, and they don't talk to each other like that. Oh, you don't have them synced up. Can you sync them up? I don't see why not. Yes, let's do this. Okay, we'll figure that out later. Wait, we'll see if I break anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we can do this. Okay. Kate's going to sound my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Trusting me, this is such a bad idea. <laughs> so, red shirts. Red shirts. My opinions of it. Um, I had read all of the awards and everything, and being such a massive Star Trek fan, um, more uh, the original series than Next Gen, but I remember when Next Gen was coming out, and my dad and I were both very concerned about what they were going to do to our Star Trek. So we watched it for a while and decided that this was okay. And we really liked it. And we switched over to Next Gen. Of course, religiously watching both of them now uh, when uh, TBS would do the, the year-round things. Mm -hmm. So um, I never went into the... I tried DS9 and, and a bunch of the others, but really those were my two series. So I think I had really high hopes for this one. On top of the awards, I felt like it was going to pander to me, which I always appreciate. And uh, I feel like the first half was pandering to me. And then it went into the stuff I wasn't expecting. Yeah. Which was wonderful. Um, but I don't think my head was in the right space for it. Yeah. And, okay, I, I always spoilers. say this, but spoilers. We are going to talk about the book. If you haven't read this book, probably don't listen. Because part of the fun is the, like... Figuring out of what happens. Figuring so, out of what happens, and then... We are actually going to recommend that you turn off our podcast. Yeah. Uh, because there is... We are bad sort of business mul women. Multiple plot twists, and they're, they're very fun. And I don't think it would be the same experience if you haven't read it. But... You have been warned. <laughs> I think you can read the plot twi twists, um, the multiple levels, very lightly, like a beach read, mm -hmm. or you can read it as deep psychological meaning to life stuff. And we know my tendency <laughs> to go that route. <laughs> yeah, my tendency to go the other. <laughs> yeah, I think her route is more fun and probably would have been better for this book. <laughs> Whereas to I'm looking at it going... <laughs> okay. And, and I... I think the fuzzy Wookiee would have been happier. <laughs> Had he had this information earlier, this is tragic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I like, it. the, the book, <laughs> book actually made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the first time all month I can say, I did not, and somebody else did. <laughs> yeah, I, um, it was in my drawing class, like, listening to the last hour of it. Mm. And uh, I take that back. I cried twice. <laughs> on and, the L. Yeah, I was working on, like, see that big foot back there? I think I was working on that big foot. And um, uh, yeah, I was like, why would somebody notice? Oh! <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Um, it, it's a little bit weirder when you're on the owl. <laughs> In the morning commute, nonetheless. So you've got, like, the whole L smells like soap and freshly perfum- perfumed ladies. <laughs> Everybody's in the most beautiful, put-together, business-like stuff. So I already look out of place because I'm a designer <laughs> and I'm like, eh. So <laughs> I've got my snowboarding coat on, I've got boots, and like, whatever. I've got my headphones in, and then I start crying <laughs> at 7 a.m. With everybody looking at me, which I try and conceal by doing this, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate the layers of this book because there was there was philosophical layers, there was emotional layers, there was you know it it, it was good. I mean, it was a fun book, but. So what was the, it, it the has, part that did it for you, like the, the crying bits? Uh, it was, um, so there's there's a character in the novel who has lost his wife, and through the, the various twists and turns of these universes, he is essentially reunited. I mean, not exactly, but essentially. And um, so it was them, like, you know, they're they're meeting for the first time but so the premise of this novel is that you you start off in kind of a star trek universe um and the, and an ensign has been assigned to a new ship and he is realizing that people die a lot and it's the lesser characters <laughs> And he starts realizing who the characters are. They're, and everybody operates on the ship knowing what the rules are. And they're right. the Star Trek rules, the ones we all made fun of. The main characters don't die. There has to be um, a, a um, oh, what did they call it? Uh, not gift, a... Hmm. A token death, essentially. Uh, okay, so yeah. somebody that dies so that the, that has some weird connection to one of the main characters, like I worked with him on my first blah blah blah, or yeah. I trained his. So son it has emotional re- re- resonance, but to the original. But character. you don't care that they die, <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, and then there's like the main characters can get like mutilated. Uh, and they're fine, they, like, two weeks Like, later. over and over and over again. But they're fine. Um, and then one of, one of my favorites was the, the technical problems. Like, something is wrong with the ship. And, you know, just suggest a solution. Doesn't really matter what it is. <laughs> Make it up. <laughs> my favorite was the black box. Yeah. Just put it in the black box and walk away. <laughs> How long did he say you had? Two hours and 45 minutes. In two and a half hours, come back. The black box will have your results. What? (laughs) What does the black box do? It'll have your results in two and a half hours. (laughs) And the thing is, as you're reading this, and these are all stuff that we knew from watching Star Trek. These are all the tropes. Yeah, and even that, like, even though I was not, did not watch the whole thing, even I, like, knew... What she they were referencing, too. like there were probably, like I said, there were probably like like smaller Easter egg kind of things in there that I w- I wouldn't have caught. There were some good ones. I was overarching more. ideas. I I felt like I got. Yeah, yeah. So they also they do a wonderful job in that portion, the the part that I, I'm very happy with, and then they do a really good job of explaining why. Because, you know, this is befuddling. Somebody walks into this and obviously you're like, we're not able to replicate the data that your ship keeps coming up with. Why would that be? And um, they do an excellent job of explaining that and why it's so weird. And then linking it all back to this multiple realities thing. Uh, and one thing that they don't do that you would think that they would do because the world that they've built allows for it is they don't fall into explaining things that there are no explanations for. Mm -hmm. Like they just allow some mysteries to be. Right. I don't feel like we ever got a clear explanation as to why the writers were affecting what it was about the particular accident and event and his son coming on the show that made the two worlds link up. Right. Right. But they did, 
And I, th I thought that was really realistic because we only, we don't have an omnipotent source. We only know what the character knows. Right. So there probably was a very good explanation, but because we don't have a god in our midst, right. we can't know. Yeah. We just know that this is what we've been saddled with. Yeah. And and so what has ended up happening is that so he, he gets on there, he figures it out, he's he's trying to figure out why he meets this this sort of mysterious uh, guy who's who's hiding away on the ship and basically figures out that they're on a television show and um there are writers in this other universe who are basically writing what happens to them so they end up like getting out and going to this universe and <laughs> confronting the writers um so that was kind of the first twist was them getting out and going and meeting the writers and then um you know and they, that's where it starts getting more psychological because at that point what do you ask the writers of of your life he's trying to say just make our deaths have meaning people right. are dying for no reason and the writer comes back with that's how people die all the time right people die with no meaning and yeah. of course they can come back with but we don't have to yeah and and part of this is that um it's a crappy show like, it's, it's a crappy sort of throwaway sci-fi show. Um, and so it, it kind of switches in to the writer's point of view. And, and it um, becomes a writer starting a... The writer is starting a blog because he has writer's block because he's just been told by his characters <laughs> <laughs> that when they write... When he writes them... When he writes their deaths, they really die. Like he's, and, and so now he feels like he can't kill them. <laughs> right. So that would be murder, and murder is wrong. Yeah. And and now he has writer's block, but deadlines. And he could get fired. <laughs> so it, it, it's. I thought that part was great. Like he's he's having all these conversations. He he reaches out to other writers to see if this has happened to them. A writer actually meets with him. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. This stuff yeah. is super super fun. But it does get into that uh, much further away from from the Star Trek genre mm -hmm. and much more into um, creative process. And yeah, which I, I really for creatives. creative. Yeah, I, I I really appreciated that, and just this. I mean, it was all very symbolic for the struggles that you have, you know, between making a living and doing good stuff. Um, because you know, he he kind of like people obviously don't really believe that his characters are. <laughs> come to life and her dogging to him but it basically comes down to like he feels bad about writing crap and killing off characters you know kind of just for the ratings um mm -hmm. and that's really the existential he crisis because he can yeah and he doesn't have to write any better than this and it'll pass yeah and this will keep him and it's a living. job and because it's a job and it's, you know, this is what he does. And he makes this up this excuses what he's for himself to do and... of, you know, this is, it's good enough. I'm not a bad writer because if I were a bad writer, I wouldn't have had this job. Right. All the excuses we make for ourselves yeah. as creatives. But as creatives, we also always have that inner voice saying, but you can do better. Yeah. Or you should do better. Or conversely, it's, it's that inner voice that's always saying, you're not good enough. You're yeah. never good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Which is problematic and can cause writers, artists, whatever, block. Yeah. Um, so, and then on top of that, <laughs> because we don't have enough layers here, um, there's also this layer of, of what has caused these worlds to link up is that the, the writer's son was in a really bad uh, motorcycle accident and is in a coma, but he had been on the show briefly um 
and which is which is how it all linked up and then that all kind of comes for full circle and like it all kind of wraps up in a nice neat little bow and and makes you cry (laughs) yeah yeah it does it was the uh, memory crystals for me, where she's looking at these memories that she... Yeah. The guy whose wife died was holding on to a bunch of his memories uh, of him with his wife. And, of course, she had a meaningless death because, well, frankly, in life you have meaningless stra- deaths, but um, on this show especially you didn't have to. Um, and so he gives these memories, which are essentially like those little Star Wars, like, 3D hologram things yeah and he gives them to the woman on this alternate planet that was his wife right and she of course has no memories of any life with him she doesn't remember him at all because she only worked with him one time for like 10 minutes in her lifeline and she was seeing this whole world that she could have had this potential life and yeah, that kind of got me right in the cock. Yeah, the actually, I think I cried there, too. I think it was in the car then, though, which, which is, Less you know, I cry saying. listening to audiobooks in the car all the time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not as memorable. Yeah. Hey, what's up, honk, yeah, honk. It's, it's not as memorable as, as being in drawing class and being like, oh, God. <laughs> it's memorable if you get to that part on the L, especially yeah. the Belmont yeah, transfer true. going from blue, blue to red. <laughs> Great. Mm. <laughs> Especially when you're having, you know, creative existential crises anyway. Yeah. It's like, yeah. What's the life I could have had? <laughs> oh, girl. <Kate. laughs> <laughs> so it was a wonderful book. I liked it a lot. It was a lot more than I had bargained for. I would have... Having gone into it with the information I went in with, I would have been happy if it had stayed the light, funny first half for the entirety of it. The fact that it switched over and did so much more should have been a massive key selling point for me and generally would have been, but I was totally in the mood to be pandered to, so... I need to come back and read it again with a second set of eye goggles. Yeah, and I just, I just loved it. When it started switching, I'm like, oh my god, this is great! <laughs> this is so much fun! <laughs> yeah, we have essentially swapped bodies <laughs> this month. <laughs> yeah, the, the one caveat about the audiobook is that, um, and you said this too, um, there is there are a lot of saids, like he said, she said... Okay. And it and it does I actually got embarrassed listening to it because it was so and so sad. And then when it so and so sad. Yeah. So and so sad. For some reason, I I don't know I mean I listen to audiobooks all the time. For some reason in this book it's really noticeable. Um Will Wheaton does a great job reading this book. Will Wheaton yeah. read this. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's amazing. But just note that if that might be a little annoying. But I, I don't I don't think it's a big deal. It stops about midway through. Yeah. Like I it's really bad the first two or three chapters. Yeah. Really bad. Um but uh but yeah, that's the one negative I have. Yeah. Is Less it? annoying I think if you were reading it in a paper, Probably. paper form. Yeah, I think it's I think it's just the, the audio version. Yeah. For some reason it just I feel like Will could have just cut those out. <laughs> yeah, like it, 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 that it is an argument for, like, if you're going to do an audiobook, like slightly changing it. But I, I think at least where Audible's concerned, that's not they don't. Really that's do not their that. mission statement. Yeah. So, um, so just be aware of that. But otherwise, totally recommended and totally recommend the audio version. Go in with slightly more information than I had, but yeah, yeah, very good. Very, very good. So, yay! Thumbs up from both of us. Let so, up. what did you read this last month? Has it been a month? It's been a month. It's yeah, been longer it's, for it's you guys, but for yeah. us, it's been a month. A little more, I think. Um, 
So, okay, I've, I've been, I feel like I've read a lot of stuff that I didn't completely care for, um, but uh, one, one significant one I read, I, I listened to, um, was the Book of Life, which is the final um, book in the Deb Harkness Vampire Trilogy. Um, and the second book is still my favorite. The last book is the whole series. This it, I, we talked about this before. It's her first fiction series. She's a history writer. Mm -hmm. The history in all of these is great, especially in the second book because that's where they go back in time. Um, the third one is a little slow. Um, I still liked it because I liked the series, but um, a little bit slow. Uh, but I still I still really like the series overall, especially if you like historical fiction. Um, I also read or listened to all of, all of this pretty much is listening to, um, death comes to Pemberley, which is a Fred and prejudice murder mystery. <laughs> Why do I do this show with you? <laughs> I want recommendations, not this. <laughs> I, uh, I had heard it and it's, it's by PD James um, oh, and there's an author that this gets compared to, I can't remember, um, other than Jane Austen, obviously. Um, but I had heard a lot of really good things about this, and I just, I, I put Masterpiece Theater on my DVR, um, because it, you know, Downton Abbey, and I, I like it, it's what they do in general. Um, but that is, they must have replayed it. Death Comes to Pemberley must be a BBC series, and they just did it on Masterpiece Theater. And so I saw it on the DVR, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll listen to that. Um, I liked it. It was a little bit of hard listen. Um, I find that Jane Austen-style stuff I like to read more than I like to listen to. Um, but if you're a Jane Austen fan, you probably like it. Um, what else? Uh... The last, I talked about this a little bit at the, the end of our last podcast, the, the last months, I think it was last month's, vaginal fantasy reads were superhero romances. It's one of these books was one of the weirdest books I've ever read. And I almost... And saying something, considering what books they come up with. Yeah, I almost recommend this just because it was so weird. I know that was almost. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't entirely like it, but it was just so unique. the The main characters, <laughs> A plus for creative chops. Yes. <laughs> the main character's superpower is that she is a hypochondriac, and the premise of the book is there's this sort of league of superheroes that takes their, um, their, they're basically their mental issues and use them as a weapon. <laughs> so they, they go and they reprogram people by making them so miserable. <laughs> it's so weird. It's this just, could be me. <laughs> I can make people miserable. I'm really good at that. And, and in doing this, they make themselves normal. So they're basically taking their illness and putting it in somebody else to make them a better person. So weird. So weird. Um, but she's a hypochondriac. There's a gambling addict. Um like a somebody who's extremely depressed. So it's like all these mental illnesses. Again, not exactly. None of this sounds like superpowers except for the fact that they can give it to somebody else. Well they're they're using it in a superpower way because okay. they're reprogramming villains. Hmm. Okay. Does this reprogramming involve like a lot of close personal contact like do they sit down and have they tea? have well yeah so they have to get okay. involved with the person and get to know them and get them to trust them and how they, realistic is this is this like they meet bad wall street bankers that are corrupt and like 
decide to have tea with them until they become a hypochondriac. Oh my god, Basil, you're adorable. It's <laughs> like perfectly framed. Sorry. Basil's like, what up? <laughs> hey y'all! <laughs> That right there is an excellent example of no body shame. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, th- th- I mean, people do have real superpowers. Um, so they're they're fighting people who like there's the the main villain is is somebody who can um, basically create invisible prisons. Mm. So, uh, like, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to give too much of it away because we're not talking about that book. But it's interesting if you like kind of fluffy romance stuff and you want to read something weird, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> like, and that ringing endorsement by Blue yeah, Caldwell. Like I said, I, I didn't exactly love it, but but it it was so weird that it was kind of fascinating. Um, the other one that I'm still reading in reading rating. Or you could poke a dead badger. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> the, the other one, the, the other superhero hero one is Karma Girl. And it's also kind of weird, but but better. Like, it's a world where super superheroes are weird. Re- it's like Chitlick with superheroes. There you go. If you like Chitlick and you like superheroes, you might like this. It is not not my favorite thing. I don't hate it, but it's not my favorite. But I can see where this would be a sweet spot for somebody. Um, and Christmas books! Because it is Christmas time! And I love Christmas books. Um, I shouldn't have shown up for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back next month. <laughs> um, I actually didn't write this down, but I just remembered it that because I was I saved it for after Thanksgiving because I can't start Christmas things till after Thanksgiving, and I was so ex- uh, excited to start it because the In Death series is one of my favorite series ever. Um, it's uh, the the audiobooks are just so much fun, um, but uh, they they had a new holiday one out. Uh, festive in death, and I loved it. That's, That's a shocker. All. There's a, there's like forty <laughs> of them, and I love all of them. Um, I don't know. Tell me about the series. I don't know in death. I I think I've talked about this before. In death Probably. is is it's J D. Robb who is actually um, Nora Roberts. It's oh. her pen name, and Nora Roberts is one of those writers. I mean, she does the really hardcore romance stuff that I don't like. Um, the really sort of traditional what you picture your grandmother reading kind of romance novels. She does those. That's what she's known for. Um, those aren't really my thing. Um, the end of series is mildly, mildly sci-fi. It's set in the future. Um, the uh, I, I actually like all the. There's lots of neat technology in it, although mm. it's just sort of part of the story. It's not a sci-fi series, but um, it has a little tiny bit of that. Um, the main character is um, a cop. It actually, if it, it really completely reminds me of Castle, the series, with uh, Nathan Fillion. Um, the cop totally reminds me of the cop in Castle. And she's the main character, um, and then she has this... Uh, um, Irish billionaire husband <laughs> who owns basically the whole world. Um, and they, and she's a cop and he's like, he has a lot of technological hacking and, and abilities and stuff. And so it's basically like her and him and then, you know, the other people she works with. And, um, it's a mystery series really. And it's, it's basically kind of a cozy mystery series, although it does get pretty gruesome sometimes. Um, and there is a lot of them. They are formulaic. I can see where you would get tired of them over time. I love them. It's like Suki Stackhouse. Like I could have probably done Suki Stackhouse forever, even though it was sort of the same story over and over again. Um, <laughs> but it's it's good, and it's 
the the romance is definitely there. There's always a couple of sex scenes, and it's like, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know your sex scenes are bad when blue. No, they're, is... they're, they're good. I just no, I I'm not a big fan of sex scenes. Yeah, me neither. I mean, unless there's something like you know different or interesting about them. And and I'm, I was telling somebody else about this the other day. This is the stupidest thing because I feel like sex scenes are always the same things. But my favorite thing about the Sookie Stackhouse novels was her like sitting around in her house. Like I like the cozy bits. The cozy bits can be the same till the, the end of the world. And I apparently that never gets old. You sit around and drink tea. I like it. You get all hot and bothered. Yeah, like, I've like, seen yeah. this. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so. Pondering <laughs> some <laughs> Yeah. So it makes no sense, but there you go. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, totally, if you, if you like, like, fun, light mystery series, it's a great series. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was excited to read the holiday one. I also read uh, Star of the East by Tasha Alexander, who's is a historical romance writer. It was very short, but a fun little historical holiday novel. And um, Debbie McComer's Starry Night, who that was like saccharine sweet, which she is. I knew that, but it I, is I read it anyway, because it's Christmas. <laughs> and I must read all the Christmas books. It's not Christmas. It's Hanukkah. <laughs> it's Yule. I, I've, I've decided I want more Yule in my Yule time. I'm okay with that. There, Yule comes with Krampus. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a Christ in my Christmas kind of person. So Yule, <laughs> Yule, Yule in my Yule time. I'm not a Christ in my Christmas kind of person. No, it's not a religious. I'm I'm sorry if anybody's religious, but it is not a religious holiday for me. Um, I, I was going to say as long as you acknowledge like some people with some people. Yeah, blah, yeah. No, likes to I, I, I understand. Like it is for my mom. I, I get that, but like I am not religious in that particular she likes way. Everything shiny. <laughs> this time but, of year is really good for people who like shiny yeah, things. I like I like all the Yule stuff. I like the magic. Because Christmas is magical. <laughs> it's Santa Claus. I know Santa Claus is like Coca-Cola, but I don't care. <laughs> it's also Saint Nicholas. And then and then there's Krampus, who is it's not nice, but he's cool looking. I find Krampus <laughs> an excellent teaching tool for our youth. So yes. I okay, if you've read Brahms Krampus, actually, I can totally see his point. Yeah. Yeah, so more Yule in the Yule Tide. Yeah, I am down for that. So the the Christians have their thing, that's mine. <laughs> I just like eating food, so I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, and we also like the eating of the food. That's also one of my really, favorite really Christmas really bits. Latkes. I'm going to, to uh, Izzy's house tomorrow for latkes and Selena Spring applesauce. And I'm going to make corosis. I, I have and... to wrap presents. Mm. Wrap bring your wrapping paper. I could. I oh my could. god, totally bring your wrapping paper. This would be awesome. <laughs> oh, bring my wrapping paper yeah. to Izzy's? Yeah. I don't think she would appreciate that. <laughs> it's Izzy. Hi, she I'm just here. I'm hilarious. Okay, <laughs> between Izzy, Selena, and myself, your presents would be wrapped in two minutes flat. Selena's would be the cutest ever. Mine would be a mess. You'd have to rewrap those. <laughs> but, but they would be fun. Uh, and you'd be done in ten minutes. It'd be great. I see nothing wrong with this plan. Okay, you're going. <laughs> I've just decided. <laughs> so, what I have read, um, I did a 360 for myself. And at the beginning, uh, at the end of the last book, um, I had tried to find a bunch of light reads for myself. And I've uh, utterly failed myself every time I've tried to find light reads. Uh, the words of a book actually rearrange themselves on the page the second I pick them up to involve death and destruction. So, <laughs> so it is best if somebody else picks them up for me. Um, so Blue, being the sweet, wonderful friend she is, brought me, I kid you not, Happy Cat Book. <laughs> it was in my book of the day calendar. <laughs> and there, there is, there's a little blind kitten on the front cover. It's awesome. It's called Homer's Odyssey by Gwen Cooper. And uh, 
It was a lovely little book about a girl, that, a woman that, that adopts this little blind kitten uh, at, I think it was like four weeks old. He has to have his eyeballs removed because they're so badly infected. And of course, it's a stray. So what the vet should have done was put the cat down. What the vet did do as a new vet was try and rescue the kitty and then figure out who would take the kitty later. And nobody wanted the kitten. And eventually the sad sap sucker comes in, Gwen, and takes the kitten. That would totally be me. <laughs> oh my God, it's totally, yeah. It, she's easy to relate to if you're a cat person because she's very honest, incredibly honest, which makes it a good book. And you get almost the entirety thing, spoiler alert, that you'll actually want. Cat doesn't die at the end. By the time you're done reading it, the cat is still alive and kicking, so you can read this book. Um, but it, it's basically the timeline of the kitten and how the cat teaches her really sappy life lessons, like life is short and jump because <laughs> it's fine. And you know, all the good things that you're supposed to live to trust yourself, to trust others. And the thing is that she really does learn these things from the cat because, um, the way her life is set up, um, again, with the, with the honesty that she puts forth, you're only willing to hear the lessons when they're put forth in a certain way. And through this cheesy little cat thing, she can absorb the lessons. And it, it's beautiful. I actually cried on the owl for this book as well, because there are a couple points in there where you're like, oh my god, it's perfect, I love it! And there's also... I'd say two real events that are like, oh, okay. Where, again, words rearrange themselves on the page. This is a happy cat <laughs> book. She moved uh, four blocks from the Twin Towers three months before 9-11. Wow. So we get to live through that. Uh, but she handles it well, beautifully. And uh, cat survives, so you're okay. Uh, and then another time where... Uh, I don't think I ruin anything by saying this. The cat saves her life, literally. Um, the, the blind cat that cannot see the burglar at the foot of her bed. And yeah, the, the cat is hissing, can't see what's going on, but she knows something's going on because this man is hissing. So she wakes up and she turns on the light and there's a guy standing there at the end of her bed. And she's like, oh, God. the cat <laughs> doesn't back down. The cat starts going forward she cannot see that what the threat is but because mama has not said you're okay calm down she knows that things are now seriously wrong and goes to jump at the burglar and um again another life lesson from the cat where you hear it when you need to Cat's making himself look bigger. She thinks, I have to make myself look bigger, too. And she grabs the phone and calls 911. And when he says, you've got to put it the phone down, she says, screw you. Taking the lead from the cat. Yeah. Cat jumps at her. Long and short of it, the cat literally saved her life. And it was beautiful and wonderful. And the cat was blind. So, yay! Yeah. I have a cat book! Yeah. And it, I, I picked it up because, like I said, it was in my book of the day calendar. Which <laughs> I was like, oh, this could be an awful book. But... I feel like overall, like, I, obviously I have not read everything that the the Book of the Day calendar recommends, but the ones that I have read are really good books. So, yeah, totally life lesson book. I mean, th this list here is going to look like I've been going through self-help hell. Um, not intentionally, because again, <laughs> I tried to hand the reins over to somebody else, <laughs> and this is what happens to me. Um, so... Self-help book number one, The Little Cat That Could, uh, was excellent. Light fluff with a couple of badass incidences in there. Um, that was Homer's Odyssey. Uh, then, I, as I'm reading the part about 9-11, I'm at my parents' house for uh, Thanksgiving. And I tell them about how horrible I am at choosing books and how even my happy cat book, I'm now watching a burning man going out of a building and she just vomited <laughs> on the sidewalk. And my parents are like, why don't you put that book down? Let's get you a light book. And they went to their, their shelves and they got me a light book, according to my parents. Everybody's hearing my tragic story and be like, here, this one's lighter. And they give me this book. And this one is called... 
uh, One for the Money by Janet Ivanovich. Oh! I love this book! <laughs> How is that not a fluffy book? Okay, seriously, very fluffy book. Unless your parents hand it to you and say, there's nothing in this. And you're like, okay. So you pick it up and you start reading. And in the first two pages, uh, she's getting fingered by her friend and she's like 10. I'm like, wow, ah! okay. But that's funny. Uh, that that's one is funny. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> my parents just gave this to me. So I flip the oh, next yeah, page and then they're having sex. And then I'm like, uh, it's by page 12. And I'm like, I'm just going to read this not with them. <laughs> I love like, like, oh. gave me those books. <laughs> <laughs> Who's like pink and fluffy? I love her. Not fluffy like that. Also, the in depth books. Okay. Well, not recommended. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Stephanie Plum is also very, very fun. Much, Stephanie much Plum's the light. detective in this. And yeah. it was. It was super, super light, super easy reading. Um, there were, you know, uh, enough action to get involved. There was a little bit of poverty involved and a little bit of like, um, I guess it's the first, the first one. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 oh, yeah, Lula, Lula. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. that one was slightly mm -hmm. more yeah. fine. She, she got, uh, with bottle <laughs> and nearly dead and strung up on the balcony and left for dead bleeding. Yeah, she um, recovers really well. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, words rearrange on the page when I pick up the book. <laughs> it makes sense that it was the first one because as I'm reading this, I kept thinking it was like, how old is this fucking book? Because they're talking about, he has a car phone. Like it's something they have to say to us. <laughs> yeah, there's a thing. And most people don't have car phones, not cell phones. So this was clearly back in the day where like, does everybody remember when the phone rang by honking the horn for you? So, like, all the construction workers would have, like, run off the building and run back to their car and see which person's car was, the phone was ringing, i.e. car honking. Was Ranger in that one? Yes. Oh, Ranger. <laughs> Ranger is a big-ass, burly... He's Cuban Batman. <laughs> he is, although that would be Batman well. That's a real character. Like, I am Batman Well. <laughs> if anybody has not seen the Tick series, please watch it. That is one of my favorites. I freaking love it. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> How could you? I was American Maid for Halloween. Made yeah. and I own, like sewed everything. Yeah. <laughs> Big fan. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, as I said, a little heavier than I anticipated. <laughs> Although, it was my fluffiest read. Yes, my fluffiest read involved poverty and rape and leaving people for dead. It's funny. It was funny. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, let's see. And then I picked up uh, Yes, Please by Amy Poehler. This oh, one I did yeah. on audiobook yeah. because the uh, comedian ones are always good to do on audiobook because they read their own books. And wonderful. Absolutely amazing. I will say again, <sighs> comedians are funny for a reason. <laughs> They're hiding all their pain. <laughs> this was like a self-help book hidden with comedy, which actually is like right up my alley. It, it's perfect. It was just like a long line of books to like disguised as fluff that are actually self-help that I went through in one month just because people kept handing them to me. And this one I actually chose on my own. The universe is trying to tell me something I don't know. I, I should become a rocket scientist tomorrow. <laughs> That's clearly. Um, she was wonderful, amazing. It was fantastic. It was like reading... It was like wa uh, watching Sarah Silverman comedy where, you know, she makes that joke. It's about rape and AIDS and strippers and hookers. But it's funny. It really kind of was just like that. It was an all-in-one package. There's divorce in it and life choices and drugs and horrible things. And it's all hilarious and wonderful and has a lot of really fantastic 
advice, especially for females, uh, on career and love and life and things to just ignore. And let's see, the last one I just started was is Local by Brian Wood and Ryan Kelly. And I'm adding both because uh, it's a comic book, so you've got okay. author, illustrator. Um, it's one of the ones that was sent by, to me by my friend Alan, who uh, sent me some books. And the first one was phenomenal, and I can't wait to get a little further in this one. So far, uh, it starts off with a fantastic little hook of somebody coming into this girl's apartment uh, and taking pictures of himself. Um, just as a, hey, I broke into your house. <laughs> you shouldn't leave the key there. Polaroid! And it's very modern, very now. It's taken place in Portland, and it looks like a story that could only take place in, you know, small town America, sort of hipster areas. Yeah. And so far, so good. Cool. Um, I actually have one more. Oh, yay! That I just started and mentioned because I think it's really good. I started um, The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. Ooh. Which we went to see her on her book tour here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I picked the audiobook because she reads it. Um, not realizing that, so we went to the show, kind of, or, or to the book, book signing, book talk, book signing, not really knowing what to expect. Because it's Amanda Palmer, but it's a book tour, you know. So, would there be music? I don't know. It's a book tour. So, um, there was. I mean, it was basically like a show with book stuff interspersed. And um, so, I, I started the audiobook thinking it would just be an audiobook. It's and Peter Sagal was there. Yeah, Peter Sagal was there and interviewing and her. interviewed her, uh, which was very cool. I love Peter Sagal. <laughs> he made fun of me once. It was great. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have that on my TV. I stall. witnessed that. It was I'm, awesome. <laughs> I mean, Peter Sagal made fun of me. It'll be on my urn. Peter Sagal made fun of me once. <laughs> Kate's a <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> um, the audiobook is the same thing. There's there's music. It's, it's great. It's a whole multimedia experience. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I love and, her music. Yeah, and and the and the message is great. Um, you know, cre creative people um, have a hard time making a living, but are also afraid to ask for help. Um, it's sort of a um, anthem for asking and. I'm only a little ways into it, but it's it's really good. So if if you if you need to hear that, <laughs> pick it up. <laughs> and I recommend the audiobook because obviously the book book's not gonna have all the music in it. <laughs> I love Amanda Palmer for her ability to be outspoken mm -hmm. and wear all of her emotions on her sleeve all the time. Uh, which is something I think um, only artists do well and yeah. with such gusto. Uh, but in this day and age, I think it's very difficult for artists to do that uh, because we're so much more exposed. Just people in general are more exposed. Um, so, yeah, way to take that into the century. Yeah, and I and I'm like very opposite of her in that she's a very like big outgoing person and I'm a, tend to be a very reserved one except when I'm on a dance floor um but <laughs> but I, I really could use more of her like not caring what anybody thinks kind of attitude yes she could so yay <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's it one more thing Oh, I've got to pick a book. Yay! What are you <laughs> reading next? What's the um, the book that will turn into self-help in my hands? What, what is this? <laughs> a rogue by any other name. <laughs> oh, God! I have not this here. And it's, it's not Christmas, but it's red like Christmas. <laughs> There's a pretty girl in a dress on the cover. 
<laughs> so this is <laughs> this was the book that I got in my book riot box a while back, and. <laughs> We got some sort of Princess Diaries BS over here. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I might not be doing this again next month. <laughs> no, you can keep that copy. No. I, got, I got that one in my book, right? Book. Um, <laughs> the rank requires respectability, but the lady wants passion. <laughs> We agree too much, so we, we have to have something. In it. And I just wanted to read this and sit there and, and go, Kate is reading this. <laughs> uh, but this is Rebecca Shinsky recommended for people who don't like romance novels. <laughs> so we're going to find out if that's true. I really respect Re Rebecca Shinsky. So, oh, oh, and I have one more thing. I have never actually read a romance Keep novel. Talking. The um, covers are too much for me. <laughs> this, this is not, when I read things uh, that say they kissed on the owl, I, I literally I look up and I'm like, oh, does anybody else see that I just read that? I, I'm so sorry. Let me just cover that in case I'm shooting her around. <laughs> it's very bad. <laughs> Yeah, so this should be fun. Fun! That's one good word for it. Maybe, maybe my luck will hold out, and the words will rearrange themselves on the page, and I will read about death and destruction. <laughs> this is actually about the Ebola virus. <laughs> if not, you could make me read something like war-torn and awful next month. <laughs> Um, so speaking of Book Riot, I got my new Book Riot box because uh, I subscribed to their quarterly box. Um, and uh, there were some neat things in there. There was um, uh, Miss Marvel graphic novel was in there. Oh, I read some of the openings uh, for that in the, um, the first release that they had. And if anybody doesn't know, the Miss Marvel big shindy dig that everybody was talking about is um, they made her Muslim. Uh, which is... I did not know that. Oh, a huge controversy over this and massive backing um, from a lot of female readers. And she's young, she's a Muslim, and she, she wears the headscarf and actually, uh, well, sometimes, and um, actually goes through a lot of the assimilation issues that uh, Muslim teenagers are going through in the That's U.S. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I... I um... I showed it to my husband, who's a big uh, comics reader, and he was like, oh, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, drew a Miss Marvel, Marvel in honor of it, because her new outfit has, you know, the, and um, it's kind of Indian in fashion, where it, it's kind of a tunic, and then she's got a scarf, not headscarf, just a scarf around. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll take that out there to my mom's when we go in. Uh, yeah. For Christmas vacation. Um, so I got the new bikes that that was in it. Some, some other, it was a lot, a lot of kind of arty stuff. Um, but I got this awesome cap. Actually, it's super cute. <laughs> uh, turn around so you can actually see. It's like this little stocking cap that says books. books. <laughs> it's awesome. Only you can make this and adorable. I love it. <laughs> I love my little books hat. Oh. Let's see your eyebrows a little bit, sweetie. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yes. Kate approves. <laughs> so I just thought I would show that off. <laughs> Yay, dorks. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I will hopefully get these up soon. <laughs> so people can actually see them. Like the two people that see them. Um, and uh, we will see you next month. Well, we will see what Kate That's thinks the, the, about the romance. Chain around now. my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bear the weight of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>